Hello guys and welcome to the next episode of the Homebrew Z80 build. In this episode we're going to look at the address bus with the logic analyzer and then also talk about the steps we're going to take to uh, get this computer finally working. So let's get started. So on the desk here in front of me you can see the Homebrew Z80 board and then you can also see an Arduino Uno here uh, and this is all connected into the um, workstation PC that I've got over here on the bench. We're powering off the 5 volt TTL cable as normal, uh, and then here's our logic analyzer, uh, this little box here. Um, if you've got any questions about this, um, feel free to ask me in the comments and I'll point you in the right direction for where to find it um, and uh, give you some more information about it. Uh, I'm actually really pleased with it, it only cost me about £15 and um, it's invaluable, so, uh, it's been invaluable so far. So the aim of this setup is to control the main Z80 processor with the Arduino Uno. And I'm doing this using a set of data bins here which are directly connected to the data bus of the Z80. That way I can send it opcodes um, and get it to execute different functions. At the moment all the software on the Arduino Uno does is send it a no opcode repeatedly. So that's just all zeros on the data bus. And we're going to have a look at the output from that now. So this is um, the output of the logic analyzer connected to the first eight pins of the address bus of the Z80. And as you can see, the processor is actually correctly counting through the addresses. So the program counter is incrementing correctly uh, and it's stepping through each ad address in turn each time it receives the NOAA code. So you can see here we've got a one then a 2, then a 3, then a 4, and so on, all in binary across the first 8 data pins. Uh, and the further on we go with this, the higher the number will go in binary. So what this means is that everything in terms of the processor is working correctly so far. So we can get it to correctly no op, and that means our clock, for, our clock signal is working well, and the processor um, is wired up correctly, so it's actually functioning and receiving the opcodes. So, why are we having problems? Well, I think it's something to do with the way the memory is being addressed. So, I'm unsure at the moment as to whether the processor can actually correctly access memory. And I also know there's an issue where um, when the processor tries to access RAM at a higher memory address, it basically can't do that properly because the way the memory, um, the address bus decoding, happening um, with this chip up here so that definitely needs rewiring possibly with an additional board so I know I've got those two problems however we need to verify whether the processor can actually access memory in the first place so we need to verify whether the Z80 can access memory correctly we want to avoid RAM because I know that there's uh, an issue with the memory address decoding up here so we want a program that can run solely from ROM without any need to access RAM. So what I'm going to try and do is write a simple bit of assembly that performs an addition or a subtraction and then outputs the resulting value onto the data bus. This will be able to run solely from ROM and we can look at the output value using the logic analyzer by just connecting it up to the data bus pins. As I said, I'm going to have to write a bit of assembly to do this and then compile that assembly into a program that can then be written onto a ROM. I'll probably use an EEPROM for that so that I can then modify the program and make it more complicated in the future. But for now, we just want to test that the Z80 can actually access memory correctly. I feel the issue I've been having previously is that I haven't been trying to break down this problem and troubleshoot this problem in smaller building blocks and steps. So I didn't know whether I could reliably depend on each part of the system, I was just trying to troubleshoot it as a whole. So in this episode I verify that the Z80 is functioning correctly, at least somewhat, and in the next episode I'm going to verify that the memory is also functioning correctly. That way we can break down the problem piece by piece, and we know, we, we know which parts of the system we can then rely on. In the future, what I may also do is write some software that can talk to the Z80 using the Arduino. That way I can very easily troubleshoot the 
step troubleshoot the uh, computer board by just writing some code in C rather than having to write assembly every time to do that. Of course, if I do do that, I'll release the files for that online. So if you guys are ever building a homebrew Z80 computer, you can use it yourself to troubleshoot your board. So that's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Um, follow me on Twitter if you want more regular updates of what's going on. I'm at Tim Maxwell. Um, and if you've got any suggestions or comments or things I could do better about the videos themselves, then please leave them in the comments section. Uh, and if you want to know more about the Logic Analyzer, as I said previously, also leave a comment there and I'll try and help you out as much as I can. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.